Happy Wealth Wednesday, everybody. We have a really exciting show for you today because we're going to show you how to like taxes. Oh, that's a tough one. hate taxes. I hate taxes. <laughs> okay. Well, not like, just how to avoid <laughs> paying them. Right? I don't care if you like them or don't like them. If you don't want to pay them, I want legally, to Legally. We're not legally. just the topic. Obviously, just nobody's going to jail. I, call, <laughs> I, I, jail I talked to you about it, and I was like, wow. Yeah. Just the stuff yeah. you learn Man. and everything. My I, accountant called me, and I almost passed out. <laughs> I was like, wow, how much? But yeah, so let's introduce our guest. We have Carter Cofield, and mm-hmm. he is the co-host of Melanin Money on YouTube, which mm-hmm. is a great... Great financial literacy show. Great financial literacy show, and uh, learn a lot from that. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting. You are a tax expert, financial expert. You've helped small businesses, celebrities, everybody get their money right. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting how you came into this field in the first place. So tell our audience what, you know, initially how you got started as an accountant. Yeah, so uh, most people don't know is my uh, my parents died when I was young, right? So my mom died when I was 14 and my dad died when I was 16. So, and I graduated in 09, so right around the recession. So I was the epitome of I don't have, there's no fallback plan, mm-hmm. right? So when my guidance counselor asked me like, what do you wanna be when you like go to college? I went to the computer and typed in what job has the lowest unemployment rate? because I literally could not afford to be unemployed because I watched my family and my friends suffer from poverty. Mm-hmm. So like I, when I Googled it, CPA was the number one uh, profession that had no unemployment during the whole during the whole recession. So I was I like, I want to look that up. Too. I want to do that <laughs> yeah. because it no matter what's happening with the economy, people need people their taxes need done. Yeah, they do. Right, and and you less likely to get audited, right? If you use a certified uh, CPA. CPA, mm-hmm. Exa- exactly. So I was like, I'm going to college for that. <laughs> then I went to uni- I went to University of Illinois, which was one of the top colleges, and um, here we are. Well, you did you always like numbers? Because some I, people, yeah, mm-hmm. I love numbers. I love money because I. I was I always had the question, why don't we have it, right? Like I see people with the money, but we don't have it. So I wanted to learn how I can help attract it. So I was always good with numbers, and uh, CPA was just the field that I chose to put my expertise in. Well, yeah. So you're passionate about this. I am because, like, as a culture, making money for us just became like natural and mm-hmm. and, and like something that we can attain. And as soon as we figure out that we can make money, then we figure out about this thing called taxes. Right. But now we make a million dollars and Uncle Sam wants to take half of it. Right. But then we see people saving so much on taxes that are making so much money. Billions. Like, Why am I paying more? <laughs> yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah, Jeff Bezos yeah. on my taxes <laughs> and he's a billionaire. Literally. All right. Well, let's get into some of these questions because, you know, I have a lot when it comes to taxes. Now, one thing I want to talk about is having an LLC. I see mm-hmm. people talking about that a lot more um, recently and saying when you graduate from college, you should have an LLC right away. So can you talk about um, why that's important or is it important? Yeah. So I don't know if the necessarily having the LLC in place is 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 important. I mean, you want to have it. But I think the bigger tale when it comes to taxes is that if you want to win the game of taxes, you need, need to have a business or an, become, an, become an investor. The tax code is made for entrepreneurs and investors. If you're not one of the two, you are playing yourself when it comes to taxes. So I love the narrative, like when you graduate college, like start an LLC, start some type of small businesses, because that way you'll be able to turn a lot of your personal expenses Mm -hmm. into tax deductible business expenses so i think that's why everybody says good llc asap and you and i were talking just like overall we were talking about how much we hate taxes everybody hates taxes (laughs) but the how the rich and the middle class think of taxes so differently like we think of tax paying season Mm -hmm. versus tax saving season yeah yeah so our conversation before i said that there are actually two tax seasons most people think it's only one they think of Tax season is January through April, right? Mm -hmm. That is tax paying season. Most middle class people go to their CPA in February and say, how much am I going to owe? Right. That's what middle class do. The wealthy do something different. The wealthy understand that tax saving season is August through December, the last few months of the year. And they go to their CPA and say, what strategies can we implement so that I don't have to pay taxes? Right. And if you take care of business during tax saving season, you don't have to worry about nothing do- during tax paying season because you've done the work. Well, let's talk about that let's now. Take care. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> do it for tax saving season. Yes. So one thing I always tell people is to turn your hobby into a side hustle. Right. So, for example, I had a friend. She was a lawyer making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year getting killed when it came to taxes. Her hobby was traveling. She loved to travel the world and eat at five star restaurants all across the all across the. I the enjoy world. that. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure you. I'm sure you can attest. <laughs> I can right. Make that a hobby. <laughs> so we sat down for lunch. She's like, Carter, is there any way I can write these trips off? I was like, Do you have a business? She said, No. I said, Okay. Well, let's turn this 
hobby into a side hustle. So she started a vlog about the best restaurants to eat in different countries. She started getting subscribers to her blog. She started making money off her ebook. She only made like two or three thousand dollars in sales from that side business. But what it did is it unlocked all those deductions. So right. the IRS says if you have a business, any expense that is both ordinary or necessary to operate that business is tax deductible. So you have to travel. You have to eat at these you restaurants. You have to travel. And then now you, you have some you deductions have to stay at hotels. because it was a loss. It, it, Exactly. So mm -hmm. now she might have made $2,000 in her business, but she might have lost $25,000 in her taxes. That loss from her business gets subtracted from her, her income and W-2 job. Right. So she ended up getting like a ten dollars or $15,000 tax refund. It's worth it. And so, she also has a nice And she nice traveled the world. And, like I'm saying, like, yeah. you're already doing it. <laughs> you're doing so this anyway. why don't you, whatever your hobby is, find a way to monetize it. Once you make that dollar in your hobby, you unlock all those deductions. Right. And then even certain things like, say, she went out to eat with you. That's a business experience. Expense because I paid for that meal, by the way, because <laughs> she didn't she didn't have a business yet, so I swiped my car because it was tax deductible to me. Exactly, <laughs> I'm gonna take that deduction. Exactly, exactly. So any anything, I can just start a blog post about anything, and then it has. Yeah, so like, as long as you monetize that business, so I think the other thing people can do is like, whatever your job is paying you to do from nine to five, right? Somebody else will pay you to do, to do that same thing from five to nine. Mm -hmm. Start the side business. If you're an assistant at W at your W two job, you know how many business owners need an assistant. Right. Just do it after hours. Start making money in your side business. You can start writing off things like your travel, your rent, which we will talk, we'll talk about if y'all want to. Mm -hmm. Your automobiles. All these things that we're already paying for, our business can be paying for, and we can start saving a lot of money. Now, what if you drive to work? Right. Let's just say you don't mm -hmm. have this side hustle, but you drive to work. Would your car be considered? A business expense and let's say you also at your job have to work from home at times is that also potential no. to write that off okay. none of this stuff is tax deductible if you only have a w-2 job okay. that's what sucks because it's all virtual your computer yeah, you can nothing. literally be working from home using your personal vehicle all this but if you have a w-2 job the irs says no mm -hmm. The moment you start the business, the IRS says yes. Yes. Okay. So why don't we start businesses? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think it's because the education system taught us to get a job. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, who pays for the education system? Right. The government right. pays for our tax dollars. And we don't think about taxes either when we're in school. We don't. I don't feel like I've ever had taxes come up in a conversation. Yeah. Now, you know what else I want to ask you? A lot of people moving to other uh, states. Yep. Uh, for tax purposes, can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Because I always hear, oh, I'm moving to Texas, I'm moving to Florida, I'm moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so if you move to a state that has no state taxes, you avoid state taxes. How many states are there that... Nine. Okay. Don't ask me name. I know, well, I know we got Florida, we got Texas, we got Wyoming. Uh, okay. We got Vegas. Um, no, so Nevada. So yeah. That's ve that could be worthwhile, though. I mean, if you if, when no you look city, around, if you have the abil uh, the ability to be able to move, because especially for I know somebody who got a huge chunk of money, but they moved first before they ended up getting that money from for selling. that reason. Probably yeah. save wow. five to ten percent. So if they if they got a million dollar check, they just save fifty to one hundred thousand dollars by moving mm -hmm. somewhere. Now you else. were talking about cars. Yeah. So you would you told me about a really interesting way to save a lot of money on your car expenses with, by writing them off? Yeah. Yeah, so um, v v right now, vehicles are, so last year and this year, vehicles are probably one of the easiest and most advantaged tax deductions you can take, right? So let's say somebody has a W-2 job and they don't want to start a business, mm -hmm. but they have a vehicle. If they rent that vehicle out while they're at work, like put it on Turo, put it on hire car, their vehicle is now a business. Right. So they're making money from their vehicle. So now they're able to write off all expenses related to that vehicle. Interest on your car note, gas, repairs, car washes, parking, insurance and this thing called depreciation. So right. what the IRS says is that if you get a car and it weighs over six thousand pounds, so this is what y'all see all over social media. Right. You get to write off this year, 80 percent of the value of the car. So mm -hmm. if you went and financed the Cadillac, Cadillac Escalade and it was one hundred thousand dollars you would get an $80,000 tax deduction today. <laughs> that alone wipes out most people's tax bill completely. Right. So you put no money, you got the car, you use it in your business, you wrote it off, and you save eighty to $100,000. Does it matter how often? I was going to say, can I use it yeah. like once a year? So the interesting thing about the play I did, <laughs> that's a good question. So the, the, interesting, the interesting thing about that play is the IRS says your car has to be used at least 50% for your business. 
Okay. Now, when you rent it out, it's not about how many times it's rented. It's how, it's how, how many times it's available oh. to rent. Oh. So if you rent it out like two times and then you jack the price up high so nobody rents it out because you really don't want people using your car, as you long as that. it's available for rent, that counts towards the 50%. Okay. Or if somebody rents it out, you just got a huge... <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> On the flip side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think that that's something that any W2 person can do. You go into work, rent, list your car, have your car make money while you're at work, and then you get, you know, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 deduction depending on what type of vehicle you have. I'm hearing so much more about this, renting your car, putting your car to work. Isn't it just a tremendous liability? Well, it depends what company you use. So I, that's how I first started. Like my when I first my first business, I was working in corporate America, making a hundred thousand dollars as a CPA. I learned about this tax stuff because all CPAs mm-hmm. don't know about tax right. savings. I learned about this. I said, okay, bet. Watch this. I rented my car out while I was at work, and I ended up being like a twelve thousand dollar refund that next year from all the deductions that my car had. And yeah, people might get in an accident in your car, but that's where the company comes in and pays you. So like the company so takes insured. that liability. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I can say this. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. So no, somebody would get. So I, you know, I rented my car out on Turo. Somebody got in an accident, right? I went to the highest um, bidder, and they told me it would be eight thousand dollars for me to fix it. Turo cut me a check for eight thousand dollars. Then I go to my friend's dealership who can do it for four thousand. Right. And that's probably the difference. Okay. So I don't think it's that Whoa. much liability. If you, because if you go through the right means, now Turo is the company that I use. Turo is anything the other than that. I can't promise you that, but they used to, they would cut check based off whatever quote you get. So make sure whichever company, if you do this, you check what their. <laughs> hey, look, they I should be the calling you right now. They should be calling you right now. I also want to make sure that as we are talking about taxes, we're also talking about retiring and the Absolutely, future, yeah. savings, um, investments, right? Yeah. And so let's talk about the benefit of. Um, you know, putting money into a retirement or a savings plan, but the tax deductions that you get from that. Yeah, so a key that I think the world needs to understand is that the more you invest, the less you pay the IRS, right? Mm -hmm. And that's with real estate, stocks, whatever. So when you invest in these 401k retirement plans, you get, let's say you invest $10,000 in your 401k. Yeah, you just invested $10,000, but you also get a $10,000 tax deduction for doing so. Mm-hmm. So you're making money twice. You're making money from the investment and you're making money from the money that you save from the contribution. Yeah, some people think that because I don't have any savings or I don't have any money mm-hmm. um, extra, like I'm living check to check, that I can't afford a to sa- put into a retirement or a savings plan. But you can because this is actually going to come it's back to you. saving mm-hmm. you money in taxes. So the more you contribute, the higher your refund is likely going to be. And as long as you're using your refund for you know, smart things, you'll be putting yourself off in a better position. I learned I, that in my super broke days. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I started my Roth IRA and my 401k okay. to, to have the money go straight into that, but yeah. then also knowing that it was a uh, deductible. So, yeah. And I think the, so you have to be, you have to be deducting. Well, I mean, you're, whoever's doing your taxes. Should yeah. They, you have should to be, be, yeah, you should be that. deducting. Right. Don't do your own taxes. Cause you're probably right. going to, you're going to cost yourself more mistakes <laughs> yeah. than you will trying to, you know, outsmart your, you but know, you have, CPA. But you have to be able, you're doing tax deductions instead of just the standard deduction. No, no. So you, you're asking about standard or itemizing. It, yeah, no, itemize, no. Sorry. The moment you contribute to a 401k, no matter if you itemize or not, you get the deduction. So, so, yeah. so you want to make sure that you're contributing to a 401k or IRA. I think the bigger thing that people don't contribute is because they they're like, terrified that they don't have the day to day. No, money. they're they're terrified they can't use the money until they're sixty. But right. not true. Yeah, uh, but because he's, yeah, right. Which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not excited. You, get, you <laughs> not say, true. wait, not true. I'm learning uh, all this stuff. <laughs> like if you want to buy a home, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, so there's there's a way outside of that. There that there's that way, but there's a way outside of that. So most people don't contribute to retirement plans because they say, well, what happens if I have an emergency now? If I'm not 59 and a half, I'm going to have to pay taxes and penalties if I use the money early. Maybe. 70% of 401k providers have a loan provision in their 401k. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that. So if you look at your 401k documents, 70% of employers will allow you to take a loan against the money in your 401k for up to $50,000, or 50%, whatever's left. You just have to pay it back in a certain amount of time? You have to pay it back within five years. Okay. But the interest rates are better than any other interest rate you'll, you'll get in today's environment. I think right now you're paying 8 to 10% um, on interest. But when you borrow from your own 401k, 
you pay you make you pay the loan back. Who are you paying interest back to? Yourself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'd rather pay interest to myself than uh than Chase for twenty five percent or another credit card company for twenty five percent. So most people can take a loan from their four hundred one k and use that money if they were to have an emergency. And I think if they knew that they could take a loan from it in case of an emergency, more people will be prone to to leveraging it in the first place. But the only problem is if you don't pay it back also within the five years, and that can be an issue. Yeah, that, that, if you don't pay it back within the, within the five years, that whatever you took out is just a distribution. Right. So pay it back, but I would rather somebody use that as a loan than taking a loan back, taking a loan from another company at 25, 30%. And it, it just take about, don't take out more than you know you can pay Yeah, back. and then what, what are you taking out for is the better, better question. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I, think, yeah, I think if we all get clear, <laughs> because what, 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 I, what, we've had, what I've had some of my clients do is they'll take a loan against their 401k to buy a real estate property. Mm-hmm. Then they'll have the cash flow from the real estate pay off the loan. Mm-hmm. So now they're using their asset to generate more assets. Mm-hmm. Now, what if, say, you had some really high interest rate uh, credit cards, mm-hmm. and you said, you know what, these interest rates are so high, would that be something that a person would consider doing? Yeah, I mean, if you if you have high interest credit card debt that that's making the loan 30% amount thirty percent, now you got to pay. Now, now you get two thousand dollars a month in credit card bills. I would think it's a good idea to take mm-hmm. a, to borrow, get your four hundred one k, pay it off. Because now when you pay your four hundred one k back, you only might be paying six hundred dollars a month or yeah, eight hundred dollars right. a month instead of two thousand. So, exactly. So only take the loan like if you know what you're going to do with the money and if it's wise. Now another hack you talk about is paying your children absolutely yeah. through your business. Your business. So discuss yeah. that. Well, this is like when I was working with wealthy clients in corporate America. This is what I saw each and every one of them doing, and. It's because it's so many principles inside that we need to understand as a culture, right? So if you have a business, which we all should have, we just talked about that, Mm -hmm. and your kids work in your business, this could be shredding paper, doing your social media, answering phones, whatever, you can pay your kids up to $13,850 each. You receive the tax deduction for paying your kids, and your kids receive the money tax-free as long as they're below the age of 17. Mm -hmm. So instead of like, making money and then paying your kids with money that you already been taxed on. Why don't you pay your kids from your business so that you as the owner can get a deduction and the kids can receive the money tax free. Right. And if you want to take it a step further than that, don't let the kids spend the whole 13,850 take 6,500 of that and put it into their Roth IRA. Right. So now you've paid your kids from your business. You've got a tax deduction. Your kids receive the money tax free. And Angela, as you know, Roth IRAs Mm -hmm. are never taxed in the future. Yeah, you're paying. So now you're Mm -hmm. putting money into another account that's never going to be taxed. And if you do this when your kids are age six, by the time they're 17, they will have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of tax free money. If you want to go to college. See, use that. (laughs) If you don't want to start a business. Use that. Well, Stacey, your son aged out. So I'm not- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was her first question. She said, well, wait, what's the age? I was like, yeah. I was like, well, what happens if they're, but you can do stuff if they're over 18. Yeah, you can still pay them, but mm-hmm. all of the money won't be tax free. <laughs> you, know you know what I'm saying? But I, I would rather pay my kids um, with after tax money. And then if you want something, use this money. Don't use it. Use, mm-hmm. use my money that I, have, that I already pay taxes on. So I think that if we all did that, we would set ourselves up. Um, but we also set up set up our, our future generations. Now, another thing that you can do um, that you talk about is renting out your home to your business. That's yes. crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is. So, how does that work? Okay. So, now you went you went crazy on the phone for this. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm actually about to do. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're just you're doing it for yes. I have mm-hmm. a, a two family house. Okay. And so um, for the rental, that is actually going to be my business. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'll be paying myself my business rent to be able to use that for everything I have to do for work, for recording, podcasting, all of that. Well, I got a crazy play for you. I don't know if it's good on camera. I'll give it to you after. Um, Or we can do it. Or we can do it on however you want to do it. So one of the one of the strategies I love to teach is a strategy is called the Augusta rule. So. In Augusta, Georgia, um, they have the, the Golf Masters Tournament. And what happened was the people who lived in Augusta was like, okay, well, I'm just going to get a hotel and I'm going to rent out my primary residence. Mm-hmm. They were making ten, twenty thousand dollars yeah. $20,000 a week from all these people um, going to the golf tournament. And the IRS was like, okay, well, we want to tax that money because you all are making money that, that's outside of our taxation so but the people of augusta georgia obviously is a, is a high net worth town so they end up winning the battle of, <laughs> of course because money yeah, talks right because right? money finest lawyers yeah the finest <laughs> lawyers right 
So they they won the fight, and the IRS said, hey, okay. If you rent out your primary residence for 14 days or less, you don't have to recognize the income on your tax return. Mm -hmm. Cool. So business owners got smart. I was like, wait, well, if they can do it, can't we do it? So then that then there became this play where if you have a business, you can charge your business to use your primary residence mm -hmm. for whatever you want to do. So let's say you want to shoot content in your home. You can charge you, you can charge your business a thousand dollars a day to use your home for a content studio. If you do that for 14 days, that is fourteen thousand dollars that you charge your business to use your home. Mm -hmm. So you your business gets a fourteen thousand dollar write off for rent for just like if you was to use a space, right? right. But you get to, but you're you're the person that's that's they have to pay the money to. So now you receive the money tax free. So you can get a fourteen thousand dollars tax deduction, and you can receive fourteen thousand dollars tax free. Wow. Now let's take it a step further. Yes, let's. let's say, so <laughs> you get to choose what days you want to rent out your primary residence. Uh -huh. So what if you happen to do it when a Beyonce concert was in town? The 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 rent that you can charge your business is based off rent comps at that moment. Mm -hmm. So if Beyonce comes into town, it might you might be able to rent out your house for two thousand dollars a day right. because your city is jumping. So now we just got a twenty eight thousand dollar write off for our business, and we just received twenty eight thousand dollars tax free. Okay, so the thousand dollars a day would be based, would be based on comps. Comps. Okay. At that at that at period. That point, okay. So I had one of I had one of our clients do it. He had a mansion in and um. In Arizona, last year, mm -hmm. the Super Bowl <laughs> was in Arizona last year. Yeah, that was a wild year. Yeah, <laughs> so he went from being able to do fifteen hundred dollar comps for his area to four thousand dollar comps that week. So he was able to get like fifty something fifty thousand um, dollars in tax free money from his business by taking advantage of that Augusta rule during the Super Bowl at that time. Sheesh. So you you have to cut yourself a check. Cut that's yourself. That's yeah, gonna you have to really, yeah. yeah. That's going to be. Yeah, and it has to be off rent comp. So like, I, I would just say get a, get a calendar of your city's biggest events mm -hmm. and those are the days that you want to rent out your primary residence to your business. Although New York is very expensive every day. Any <laughs> oh, holidays. <laughs> Talk about every it. Every single I day. I wasn't able to do it, but I was trying to do rentals during the U.S. Open. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, holidays. Mm -hmm. I see a year-end video shoot coming, which I had to do anyway. 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 Yeah. And my thing is this, like, guys, we're already spending the money anyway. Right. Why not, not get, get a, a tax, tax break. deduction mm -hmm. for Because that's what the wealthy people are doing. Absolutely. They turn their biggest expenses into legitimate tax deductions. Like the fact that they could be making 100,000 times more than me, but yeah. paying way less than me is insane. And it's, I tell people, you can hate the player, or you can hate the game, or... You can learn the game, right? So you can win the game. Because the thing is, there's legal ways that you're able to do these things. So it's not like you're just not paying your taxes or you're doing something you're not supposed to. You're just understanding how the system works and working within that. Now, you also speaking of holidays, uh, there's a way that you can save money on your taxes as far as holidays with your friends. Yes. So um, oh, that's it. This is a good, the good type of <laughs> the good type of holiday. The good type of holidays, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, as of this recording, we have, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and most people are going to get together with their family anyway. Probably rent out a nice Airbnb, cook the food. I have a great Airbnb if anybody's interested, but okay, go ahead. Yeah, shameless plug. Right. I love it. 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 <laughs> um, so if you have an LLC or an S corporation, whatever, your business is structured, and we can talk about the difference if y'all want to, um, you're allowed to have what's called a board of advisors. Just like Fortune 500 companies have board of directors, you can have board of advisors. So this can be your family, your friends, your cousin, your mom, dad, little sister, daughter, son. You can pick up to five people, five to six. Don't pick more than that. It's being greedy. So mm -hmm. I say about five to six people on your board of advisors. Now that you have a board of advisors, you are able to have quarterly board of advisor meetings whenever, wherever in the world you want to have them at. So my thing is, since you're paying for the Airbnb anyway and getting your family to come to one place anyway, why don't you have Thanksgiving become one of your board of advisor meetings? All you have to do is meet with them for an hour or two, take notes, take photos, talk about business. You're able to write off whatever the Airbnb cost. You're able to write off whatever flights you pay for for your family to get there. And the meals that you get catered to the Airbnb are still 50% tax deductible. How do you set that up? Um, so all you need to have is a contract in your 
or in your operating agreement of your business. So you have your LLC, you have your operating operating agreement. You just put the board of advisor, the number of people, and their first and last names. Have them sign it. Keep that in your operating operating agreement. And then when it comes to writing it off, just use your business card for the expenses and document. Like take photos of y'all <laughs> meeting. Take meeting minutes. And like you can use an app like Otter.ai. It just literally transcribes the whole meeting for you, and it goes into a folder. So you have photo documentation. You have meeting documentation and then you, you know you can write off the holidays you can do this for christmas i do it for my birthday every year every Feels birthday. like a nice wealth wednesday trip i yeah. know <laughs> see, there you go. we have a lot to talk about with your travel. we travel yeah gotta, we have to see different perspectives around the world yeah and some people think better in other countries so mm-hmm. if i want to have my birthday in brazil and i invite my friends Ooh, who are on my business this already sounds dangerous right now <laughs> we're like you're, you're making us dangerous yeah yeah right, yeah, now. right, right. but again as long as you document things correctly, you'll be fine. An audit is not something to be scared about. If you're, if it's you're, just a pain, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, but my, but my, if everything's documented properly, it's pretty. So it's what, what, what's, more, what's more painful? A hundred thousand dollars tax bill? Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nope. I don't want that. No. No. Nope. I, I don't right. want that. Yeah. I just heard of this scenario. A lot of uh, entrepreneurs end up bootstrapping their businesses paying for it themselves mm-hmm. versus getting loans and that type of thing. So a friend of mine was telling me she didn't realize that she owed herself money. And she was talking to a financial advisor mm-hmm. about needing to get money because she wanted to do debt reduction and everything, and they were tri- figuring out the best thing. And he pointed out to her, he's like, well, if you look at your taxes, you actually owe yourself about $40,000, and you can take a loan against that. Yeah, so when most people bootstrap their business they just say all right i'm gonna take money out my personal account put Mm -hmm. in my business account because my business can't afford to pay the business bills instead of doing that i would create a loan agreement from you from you to the business saying that i'm you know i carter cofield loan this business twenty thousand dollars at a ten percent interest rate or whatever right so that you have that document in, in in place because when your business pays you back and it pays you back interest business interest on business loans is also tax deductible. So now I'm able to write off the interest that I paid myself back. Right. So like, it's so many strategies that I feel like we need to learn. This is why I was so passionate about taxes and yeah, I went out absolutely. to like be that because like I consider myself to be the tax advisor for the culture because I took what I was learning in corporate America and I, I quit, started my own business to help um, small business owners and that's why we created Melon and Money to like help people make more money also pay less taxes. You're yeah, hired. because we're very scared. You're hired. <laughs> we're very scared of the IRS. You yeah. never want to get those letters in the mail. And sometimes you're like, don't be too aggressive because I want to make sure that I'm not flagged, I'm not audited. But as long as everything is uh, through the system and mm-hmm. documented, then the, yeah, the, you the, should take advantage of it. You should take these. advantage of it because like, if you get, let's say, let's say you, you, you take advantage of all the deductions and it saves you Two hundred thousand dollars in taxes. If you get audited and you pass, it's worth the two hundred thousand dollars. Right. Right. Definitely. Because like our audits, like going to the dentist. If you haven't been brushing your teeth, you are nervous. Mm-hmm. And if flossing. You, if you've been brushing your teeth, <laughs> flossing, you 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 you, you roll to the dentist smiling like, "What's up, doc? What you got for me?" Because you knew you were doing what you were supposed to do the whole time. So I don't think it's nothing to be scared about. I think the easiest way to make more money is to pay less taxes. Right. Period. Okay. What do you say to all the people listening out here who are saying, how come my accountant's not telling me this? Because your accountant's lazy. That is very true. Accountants will just do the fill it out the way and not even ask you. If they're not asking you, I like to sit down in person with my accountant at Mm -hmm. all times. And we like check in. And the way I have my uh, business set up is they can see my accounts, but they can't like pay anything from it. Yeah. So that way they're able to see like what's happening. So throughout the year, they're also documenting everything that's happening so that it's easier when it's time to do the taxes um, to know what's there. But, you know, I've heard horror stories of people having money deducted from their account. Yeah, and, you don't want to give them, yeah. like, access to pay bills necessarily because then they can they can get crazy with it. But you do want them seeing your accounts because, like, right now, like I, I've, I've looked at clients' taxes in November and be like, all right, do that, do that, implement this, $100,000 saved. Right. Even depreciation on your home. Yes. I know you talked about on your car, but on your home too. On, on your home. So, so the play that I want to give you, and I'll give it to you on camera. So, you have us. You said you bought a space, mm-hmm. right? That you're going to rent to yourself and mm-hmm. use it for work. 
Okay. Yes. Is that the only use of it? Or are you letting somebody else? Are you like that? Is really the only use of it? It is a space that like I have a two-family house. I've had some horror. It's my home, mm-hmm. and so I've had some horrible stories of like tenants not moving out, squatting, you mm-hmm. know, not paying rent. In New York too, that especially. I have to deal with. Yeah, it's really you can't tough. Get them out. Right. Yeah. So I don't want to go through that again. Okay. And so what I'm doing is a lot of times like if people come into town, now I have a place to stay, but I also can work from there. Mm-hmm. And so you know, me having my real estate license, if there's things that I want to do or meetings, at least now I have this space that I can do it in. Absolutely. So on top of that, so obviously you, you can work there and then what you, you what you can do is you can charge your your business can pay you for mm-hmm. the use of that facility. What you also can do is run a cost segregation study on your property to accelerate the depreciation because right. most uh, properties are depreciated over 27 and a half years. So if you get a half a million dollar property divided by 27 and a half, it's going to be about, you'll get about $18,000 deduction per year for having the property. 18K is good. Mm-hmm. But, or you can do a cost seg study, which would allow you to accelerate the depreciation. You can write off about 30% in the first year. So 30% of 500,000 is like a hundred and something. Mm-hmm. 150. Yeah, a hundred. Yeah, about one hundred fifty. About one hundred fifty. So instead of getting an eighteen thousand dollar deduction, you would get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar deduction, which you then can write off against other income. I'm having to talk with my accountant or getting a new one. Yeah. No, I mean, but yeah. Just, I think just have these kind, and that's why I say you don't have to know as much as I know. Right. But you should know enough. But to your accountant should know. Yeah, your accountant, your accountant should know. Yeah, your, your CPA should know, should know yeah. these you, things. You should be like, what can I do before mm-hmm. the end of the year? To and save then money? you got to do your research and be like this. And sometimes I think in certain areas there are specific. Um, you know, like landmark. Sometimes there are special tax breaks that we should always be looking into, um, as well in yeah. certain neighborhoods and things too. Yeah, on on the state level, um, on the city level. But I think if you fo- if you focus on the federal level, meaning that wherever you go, mm-hmm. you get the everything that we talked about was on the federal level. If you focus on these things, you'll be able to save a lot of money. And like, here's the crazy part, at least, at least for me. Education as a business owner is also tax deductible. But mm-hmm. when you go to college and pay a hundred thousand, and I and I I have more degrees than the than the thermometer, so I I get <laughs> I get college is necessary, I get it. But most people stop educating themselves after college. Mm-hmm. When if you're a business owner and so and you pay ten thousand dollars for a coaching program about business, that is one hundred percent deductible. Right. So why wouldn't you pay and invest in yourself to learn more? I love taking classes. And a, a lot of people get stuck on that. Well, I don't want to pay the fee. I don't want to pay the whatever. Well, like you said, you pay to better yourself or you pay the IRS for yeah, you Yeah, invest in yourself. Right. That's, you know, when you're sitting at home instead. watching TV and binge watching TV shows, you could be learning more to help bring your business to the next level. 1,000%. Excellent. All right. So you are one. You want to share all this knowledge for free? Oh yeah, with our yeah, audience. Yeah. He's offering yeah, you a free, yeah. Yeah, a free ebook here. Yeah. So I, so I have a free ebook with over a hundred different tax deductions that was well, not free. I'm giving it to y'all people for free. <laughs> people normally pay normally for it. Free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, free. people normally pay for it. But um, Thank it's a hundred different tax deductions that people can implement today. So like if you get the book today, it can save you tens of thousands of dollars before the year is out if you read it and implement the strategy. So if they text the word book to 312-847-2309, they'll be able to get that uh, book for free. All right. Yeah. Text book to 312-847-2309. Is this tax deductible for you? Yes. Okay. Just want to make <laughs> sure. Depending on how many people. Yeah, right, right, right. For sure. <laughs> Thank but, you so much. No, this was fun. And I mean, where can it, people find you also? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so on all social media platforms, Cofield underscore advisor. Um, we also can follow our company. That's Cofield 1F. That screwed me up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, Cofield 1F underscore advisor. Um, or you can check out our, our financial education company, Melanin Money, which um, we're teaching investing taxes and all types of business strategies. I mean, Melanin Money has a great YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we, really, we, really we, great we YouTube channel. We're trying to get on Angela yet level yet, but we're going we to get <laughs> no, there. we're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get that. I'm we trying to get on your level and save some money on <laughs> yeah, my taxes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in to Wealth Wednesdays. And tonight on Wealth Wednesdays After Party, Jason White talks to Gigi. Ooh, Gigi McGuire from Lip Service. Service. They talk about, she's planning to open a new restaurant. Spicy. They talk about all sorts of great things. So be sure to tune in at the Federal Code on YouTube. Yep, Gigi's been trending, y'all. 